your hand. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so before we start, I was um, praying and I felt like God wanted me to give y'all each a piece of notebook paper. So I have some sitting around y'all and I feel like God's not just going to speak through me and my dad tonight. He's also going to speak to you personally. So whenever we go into altar, I just encourage you that throughout the two messages and then even that piece of paper, just keep it with you. God's going to be revealing things personally to you. He may give you like a new word for the new year and things like that. So just keep the paper close to you and just take notes and just whatever God's revealing to you. So um, we're just going to hop right into today's word. I was, I was praying over what I wanted um, to speak on. I felt like God told me these three things. He said, you are stepping into this. Everyone write this down because you're going to need this. A season of focus a season of value, and an intentional season. So I was just like, yes, God, I receive it. And I began to um, see all these visions, and he was giving me prophetic words of all these things that had to do with these three words. I'm going to break it down, and I'm going to go by each word, and I'm going to tell you all kind of what God was revealing um, to me on that. So we're going to start off with this. God told me this. He said, a season of focus, value, and being intentional awakens a new spiritual maturity, and you're stepping into it. And I believe that that's not just for me. That's for you, too. And so God is telling you tonight that you're stepping into a new season of focus, of value, and being intentional. So we're going to start off with the word focus. If you guys are taking notes, um, just start with the word focus. And here's what God told me. He said, I encourage you to walk a little bit closer to me so you could hear my heartbeat better. And as soon as he said that, I immediately thought of John the Beloved. We all know that John leaned up against Christ's chest, and it said that he, he felt Christ's heartbeat. And I love this, like, thought that he put into my head because he also told me this. Ashley, come here for a second. So he said, get closer to me so you can put, I can put my arm around you and guide you better. So here's what, basically what happened. I was praying. Here, we'll walk this way. I was praying, and I felt like God did this to me. He was like, if I'm trying to guide you and you're walking with me, but you're over there, it's going to be harder for me to guide you. But if you're close enough to me where I can put my arm around you and we can walk walk together and I can tell you where to go. Thank you. And so I begin to just hear that. Thanks, Ashley. She was, um, God was just telling me, reel it in, reel it in. And so what that means is like, God was saying, get close to me, enough where you can hear my heartbeat. Because the thing is, whenever you love someone, you care about their heart. And if you get to know someone more, you know the intentions of their heart. You know what they value in their heart. And so with that being said, I felt God had just revealed the scripture to me. It's in Psalms 34, and it's talking about um, God's holy lovers cry out. And I love this, like, thought of the word holy lovers. That's what God validates us as. He calls us that. And he's saying, because you love me, you cry out to me, and you're consecrated for me. That's what the word holy means. And he's just, he began to just tell me this, focus in and reel yourself in closer and closer to me. And I love the verse in James 4 and 8. It says, move your heart closer to God, and he'll come closer to you. And I think about every single time that I went to to pray. I never had to wait on God to arrive. He was already there. And so I think if I'm moving closer to God, he's already going to be there waiting for me. So imagine when God's saying, really, then it's on me. I've got to move closer. I've got to get more focused. And that means remo removing distractions. James 4 and 4 says, um, I'll read it to y'all. I have it highlighted. But um, I love this verse in James. James is just really awesome in general. But it says, don't you know that flirting with the world's values places you at odds with God? So that's basically that verse is saying the closer you get to sin, the farther you're getting from God. And we don't want to be at odds with God. So you have to remove distractions and get closer and closer to God every single day. So with that being said, I'm going to talk about the word value now. Value and intentions were the words that really, really God was like putting heavily on my heart. And so God told me this. He said, what you value, you are going to be intentional about proving its value towards you. And so I thought about that. God said, what you were valuing, you prove, your you prove with your intentions how much it means to you. So I began to think about that. And I read in verse Matthew 6, 19 through 21, if you guys want to flip there with me and write it down. This verse is really powerful. Basically, I'm going to read it to you all. Here's what it says. Material wealth eventually rusts, decays, and loses its value. But instead, stockpile heavenly treasures for yourself that cannot be stolen, will never rust or decay or lose its value. For your heart always pursues what you value as your treasure. And basically what that verse was saying, that material things you find on this earth, it will go away, it will rust and decay. But it says the word of God, my relationship with you, that never goes away. And I love how it was saying, but what your heart values is your treasure. So I think that's important to us that whatever we're valuing is where our intentions go towards. And whatever our intentions go, go towards, that we also get um, results from that. So whatever, our, whatever we're valuing is important. And I think about this. When we value the voice of God, he validates who we are. And the more, basically what that means is the more we get closer to God, the more he tells us who we are. And I remember God told me this a while ago. He said, know me to know you, to know your purpose. 
And I think about that word a lot because God's saying the closer you get to me, the more closer of a relationship we have, the easier you could hear my voice, the closer you am to me, the closer you are to me, the more you hear my voice. And so God's saying, whenever you value me, I can validate you. I can tell you who you are. I can tell you what your purpose is. And I want to encourage you guys in that today to look at what you're valuing because you have to be smart about what you value because your intentions can become misplaced if you're valuing, if you're valuing the wrong things. This is a lot of wordplay, sorry. But the thing is, God goes where he's welcomed. So let me ask you this. In your personal life, are you welcoming God? And I'm not talking about on a Sunday, whenever we're all going after God. I'm not talking about on a Saturday or a Friday night or a Wednesday night. I'm talking about whenever you're face-to-face with God by yourself. In every moment of your day, are you welcoming God? Are you letting him, God, come and speak? Come and control my life. Come and, come and let me focus in on you, God. Are you focused in on God? Are you focusing in what the world's doing? And so with that being said, one of our greatest gifts in life is the ability to hear the voice of God. But I think a lot of people block off the voice of God because they're too scared to let him have control. And let me tell you, it's time for you to give up control. In 2020, 2024... Am I right? 2023? Oh, I'm a year ahead. Sorry, y'all. I'm thinking way ahead. So I think that whenever God's calling us this, he's saying, I'm calling you to value me more. Come closer to me. Hear my voice. Focus in this next year. And so I want to encourage you guys in that. So check your values to check your intentions. And with that being said, I'm going to go into my third and last point, And it is the word intentions. And I'm going to be honest, this entire week, I've heard the word intentions everywhere. I hear it whenever I listen to, like, my friends speak, and my friends' conversations have been about being intentional. My, um, I've been listening to these messages, and they're all about being intentional. I feel like I just see that word pop up everywhere. And so God told me this. He said, whenever you're intentional about your relationship with me, your mind becomes more clear. And I'm going to go back to Matthew 6, and I'm going to start off in verse 22. Here's what it says. The eyes of your spirit allow revelation light to enter into your being as if the heart is unclouded and the light begins to flood in. But if your eyes are focused on money, the light, can, the light cannot penetrate and the darkness takes its place. How profound will be the darkness within you if the light of truth cannot enter? And I begin to think about that. It says, whenever the eyes of the spirit allow revelation light to enter into your being, that's whenever light comes in. And so God basically was like, telling me, he said, are you being intentional about letting me in? And I think that's so important that we have to say, okay, God, I welcome you. I welcome you into my thoughts, into my life, into my patterns, God. I don't want to just love you from a distance. I want to love you up close. I want to hear your heartbeat. And um, as I was praying over this word, God told me this prophetic word. I'm just going to read exactly how he told it to me. And here's what it said. And this is what exactly what he told me. He said, I've called you higher. I've called you to run when no one else will. I've called you to do the hard things. I've called you to have uncomfortable conversations. I've called you to a higher way of thinking. And I've called you to be a light in the darkness. And so he began to reveal all that to me. And I was like, okay, God, what does it have to do with this message? And he began to show me, he said, this is the things I've called you to do. This is the things I've called the people that are going to be in the room Friday night. I've called them to all do this. But the thing is, you have to be intentional about your relationship with God to achieve any of that. God's saying, this is what I've called you to, but if you're not welcoming me, if you're not being intentional, then you can't do any of that without me. And so the thing is, our calling on this earth is to be a disciple and to go make more disciples. But if we're letting people around us sit comfortably in their sin, then we're doing the exact opposite of what God's called us to do. I think about my favorite verse from the Bible, Matthew 5.13. If you come to the move, I preach about this almost every week. Matthew 5.13 says, you're the salt of the earth. And I love that because salt is used to keep meat fresh. And so that means that we're called to keep other people fresh. And that is what Jesus is saying. He's affirming us. That's what I'm talking about. Um, Whenever we value him, he validates us. He's saying, whenever you're the salt of the earth, that means you're called to keep the non-believers fresh. You're called to keep them on their toes. You're called to be a disciple and go make more disciples. That's your ultimate calling. And so he's saying, if you're not being intentional about our relationship, you can't do that out in the world. And so I love how Jesus was just telling us that you're the salt of the earth, but it says if, a salt, if the salt loses its taste, then it's worth nothing to be thrown out. And so what that means is if we lose our taste, if we lose that relationship with God, then we're worth nothing to be thrown out like the rest of the world. We become like the meat that needs to be kept fresh, but God's saying, no, I've called you higher. I've called you to a higher way of thinking. And so I think about this, as leaders, and each and every person that is in here tonight is a leader. People are following you whether you know it or not. You're called to be the salt of the earth. So as leaders, being intentional about your relationship with God is vital. The Bible says that those who are held to a higher standard, each one of us have, um, the Bible is saying that in the, well, sorry, I got way ahead of myself. I'm getting excited. But the Bible is saying that whenever you're a leader, you're called to a higher way of living. And I'm going to read y'all in James 3, 1. Back to James. James is really good. Here's what it was saying. My dear brothers and sisters, don't be so eager to become a teacher in church 
church, since you know that what we are held to, what we teach, we're held to a higher standard of judgment. And so basically what that's saying is if I'm proclaiming something, I have to have, people are going to be watching me. So that means in every area of my life, I have to reflect God. I have to be completely all in with Him. I can't say something then go do one thing. Because I think about, I've also talked about this the move all the time. There was a video of this atheist and he was saying that um, the reason he doesn't believe in God is because the way that Christians act. And I think about that. We have to live completely on fire for God. We have to live completely sold out to him, our, uh, his purpose over our purpose, his, pur- his thoughts over our thoughts completely. Because if we live, if we say one thing, but then we go live another, then we confuse the image of God to non-believers. And God's saying, I've called you to, first of all, reflect me in everything that you do. And so that means having a higher way of living. And so with that being said, I think being intentional opens up a new spiritual maturity. And so I think as we go, um, even as like young kids or even in whatever age you are, I think that um, whenever we become closer to God, we, he opens up a new spiritual maturity that we're supposed to walk in. And so that means not living like everyone else around us. That means being, um, have higher mantra than everyone around us. And so with that being said, I think that intimacy with Jesus is what we all should long for right now. And that comes with a cost. That means giving up some things. I'm going to read to you all James 3.13. Here's what it says. If you consider yourself to be wise and one who understands the beautiful ways of God, advertise it with a beautiful and fruitful life, guided by wisdom's gentleness. Never brag or boast about what you've done or you'll prove, and then you'll prove that you're truly wise. And so what that is saying is like, guard your words, guard your thoughts, guard guard everything that you do so that you are reflecting Jesus correctly. And so kind of I just want to touch on the last thing, and then I'm going to call my dad up, is full circle knot, full alignment. I think that whenever we go back into altar in a little bit, I think that that is time where God really wants to just meet you face to face. 